Hey, what is going on? It's Tony from LearnAutoBodyInPaint.com. Thanks for watching the video. And this is part two of the Learn Auto Body and Paint How to Paint Cars Auto Body Questions. Um, like I said, we got a bunch of questions in from subscribers and uh, I want to cover some more questions here, okay? So if you have any more questions um, after watching this video, please comment below or the best place to do that is actually click the link below that'll take you to the blog post and then if you comment there, what I'll do is grab those comments and I'll reply to them on video like this and sometimes I'll even do a real live demo demonstration. But for now, I have a bunch of questions I want to cover on paper and I hope you enjoy. All right, so here's one from uh, Mr. Tan. When I paint my fender with base coat, it comes out cracking and one time it looked like I dripped lacquer thinner on a spot causing it to look wrinkled. I sanded everything down, reprimed the area, and repainted it, and the same thing happens. What could be the issue? Well, maybe in that one area when you were painting, right, maybe your primer, I don't know what kind of primer you're using, but maybe it dropped on the area and it ate it up if you're using a lacquer primer. Okay, that could be possible. Um, but if you're using a 2K primer, um, the, the only thing that I can think of is, is your panel was dirty. You know, your environment had some oil in it, somebody, your neighbor, spraying WD-40 around. Uh, the only reason for biting on a surface like that, primer not sticking, is an unclean surface. All right, I, you know, like I said, I don't know what kind of primer you're using, um, but wrinkling and all of that, and when you, you said you did it again and the same thing happens, that's really, really odd. Um, the only thing I can really think of is make sure your surface is really clean. Um, here's a, a part of a motorcycle that I recently primed up. It's 2K primer. Um, you know, make sure it's clean. You know, wash your part down before you prime it. You know, you want to make sure you take off all the grease, then you sand it down with like a 400 grit, and then you could lay some heavy coats of primer on it. Now this is ready to be sanded down, cut with 400 again and then base coat, clear coat. This is a front front part of a fender of a little mini bike. Um, you know, if you're getting weird things, make sure you're using a good primer. You know, use a good 2K primer um, and you shouldn't have any problems. So that's the only thing I think is it's just you had a contaminated surface. Next one, I just did my first paint job on a 1990 Chevy pickup um, and it was orange peeled. I'm doing my Mustang next, so how do I figure out the right air setting on the gun to get away from orange peel? Now, orange peel could be caused by a few things. Pressure, okay, a bad spray gun, all right, which is not atomizing your materials correctly, all right, so if you have a cheap spray gun, you're not gonna get the best results because you're not getting the most fine atomization you can. That's why people pay six, seven, eight hundred bucks for a Sada or an Iwata, or you could check out the Learn Auto Body and Paint store and get a Warwick um, for two to three hundred bucks, maybe even cheaper um, if you get the 904. They're excellent, great guns, high atomization. That's all we use here and we get unbelievable finishes. All right, so check out those guns. Let me get this bird. So this guy is so noisy. When he gets on me, he's, he's a little less noisier. All right. Um, so like I said, it's the pressure, your spray gun, and it could be the material also, all right? If you don't have the proper mixture with your clear coat, um, that could also give you a problem. It drying too quickly will give you a dryish, orange peely look. So make sure you're mixing your materials correctly. Spray gun, have a good, decent spray gun, all right? Not a cheapo one, but at least a, a mid to high quality spray gun. And the pressure you wanna be spraying at about 28, 29 PSI when you're doing clear coat, okay? And you can't be afraid of laying your clear on. You know, you wanna be about six to eight inches away from your panel and like lay it on. Make sure you're in a well-lit area. And the way to tell if you're laying your clear on well is to see it lay on. You know, as you're spraying your clear coat, you could see it lay on glossy. If it doesn't look glossy when you're laying it on, you don't have enough clear on it, all right? Lay it on, make sure you're laying it on. Use the light, use the fluorescent lighting or whatever lighting you have 
to make sure it's laying on and you want to go 50% overlay with clear coat. If you're doing candies, you want to make sure you're doing a 75% overlay. Okay, and we talk more about this in the VIP course and I show you demos on all of this within the LABAP, um, the VIP membership course. So be sure to check that out. Um, and that's about it, okay? Shoot at 28, 29 PSI when doing clear coat. Don't be afraid to lay it on and lay it on and you see it gloss up, okay? My most burning question is, new plastic or plastic bumpers and the prep of them, how some come from the factory ready to go with very little to do. All you have to do is sand it down and paint it. All right, so I have done many plastic paint jobs on, you know, like some of the new cars you get, just it has like a plastic, but if you pay extra and get the limited edition, it comes all painted, right? Like I know a lot of the Beamers are like that, um, you know, the X5s, the X3s. If you get the cheaper version, it has that plastic trim along the bottom, the bottom front bumper cover, the side trim, the moldings are all like a plastic. And some people want to get them painted, right? So all you got to do is pop those plastics off, wash them good with a degreaser, make sure all the oils are out. You can get a little scuffing pad, scuff them up, right, with the 3M scuff pads. And then uh, you could lay some plastic adhesive on it, you know, like an adhesive adhesion promoter and then put some primer on it. Chico. My dog is like going nuts over there, sorry. And then uh, sand that down and put some base clear on it. Um, what I've done many times is basically scuff it down really well and if you just lay a good 2K primer on it, you really don't need to put an adhesion promoter on it. All right, it sticks. I've done that with bumpers many times and even get into an accident with one, like back up in one, and it doesn't even crack or chip. It just, you know, absorbs it, all right? So, you know, if you wanna do an adhesion promoter, do it. You really don't have to if you have a, a good 2K primer that you're using, all right? And then all you gotta do is scuff it up, 2K prime it, and uh, sand it down with 400 grit, then you're ready to go with your base coat clear coat. Last question, I don't wanna make this too long. We're already at eight minutes. Okay, last question. Um, so you said you live by the ocean and you use vinegar and water or navel jelly for rust, all right? This is for rust. I live in the Midwest and we get snow and rain a lot and they come and salt the streets. We get a lot of rust, surface rust. What do I use then? I see a lot of confusion on this. What is the best thing to use? Because you will see some pit sometimes and other times pinholes and again other times just little rust with bubbles in the paint well you know there's something called rust prevention and um, rust repair okay so if you already have rust spots on your car you have to treat it you have to kill it with an acid all right and a salt is not an acid a salt is basically one part acid and one part base combined makes it neutral so salt itself is neutral the way it turns to acid and starts eating up your car is from the elements. You know, you get the water, the rainwater, the dirt, the weather just transforms it into a, basically an acid and starts eating out your car. So if you know boat people, marine people, jet ski owners and things, after they go in the ocean and play around with their toy, you see them hosing everything out, rinsing their engine out with plain water, right? So if you want to prevent rust after you go out in your car and you're snowing around and you got salt all up in your fender wells of your car and all that, you know, the only real way to do it is go home and rinse your car down with water, right? If you want to prevent that, that's, that's number one, all right? Go home and rinse your car down with water, just like the boat owners do with the marine guys, okay? Um, the other thing is prevention is you need to kill your rust with acid. So if you're preparing your car for paint, you're gonna fix some rust spots you basically have to grind, them, grind down those areas, sand them down, and put some vinegar on it to kill the rust. You could even use Coca-Cola. Um, you could use citric acid, which is like a salt and lime mixture. You can use Coca-Cola, which has phosphoric acid in it, um, which will kill the rust. So I think in the blog below, I'm gonna link to a video of a Russian dude 
using Coca-Cola to clean down his rusted bumpers. All right, so check that video out. But you want to use an acid to kill the rust. That's why navel jelly, you know, rust inhibitors, that's all acid. So you just got to grind it down, put your acid on it, let it sit. Then you want to wash it down again. Then you could put some 2K primer on it. You could put some epoxy primer on it um, and then finish it off for painting. All right, so those are the questions. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any more questions, click the link below. Um, I have a couple videos down below in this blog post, so check that out. And remember, in the VIP course, I cover some of this rust stuff in detailed step-by-step -step video with the navel jelly, uh, with vinegar water, with the rust, treating rust, and preparing your panel for paint, all right, to make it look beautiful again. All right, so again, it's Tony. Thanks for watching my video. Please like, comment, share. Hey, please like, comment, share. And if you're on YouTube, click the link below to go over to the blog to get your free 85 page auto body and paint manual, as well as a 90 minute auto body DVD. I think you're gonna like it, and uh, I will see you on the site. Have a good one. Thanks, cheers. You good boy? You good boy? He, he said you good boy. How, how are you? You good boy? So it's Tony from Learn Auto Body and Paint. Don't forget to get your 85 page auto body and paint manual free at the website, as well as a 90 minute auto body DVD. I think you're gonna like it. Check out the site, click below if you're on YouTube, and uh, I'll see you there. Cheers.